We came to Auschwitz. We got off from the, co from the, uh, the coaches. The sky was like late in the afternoon because the smoke from the, from the gas chambers was all over. The sky was covered with a cloud of smoke from the burning bodies of the Jewish people, children, elderly people, sick people, and so on. So we got off on the coach. We were lined up for the selection. And we were waiting and waiting and waiting. I was standing the first in line, holding the hand of my mother, after is my father, after is my sister. And then another two, three people, like five, six people per, per line, a huge, a few thousand people, a huge, huge lineup. We're waiting for Mengele, Jew, who is for Besonders Commando. He sees me, tells my mother, give away the child and save yourself. Because Mengele not only took children send them to the gas chamber. A mother who had a young child also was sent to the gas chamber. She says, take, take the child, give it to sick, sick people or old people who will, will be sent to the gas chamber anyways. At least save your life. Why should you both together should be, 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 uh, be killed? I was holding my mother's hand and I hear what he says, give away your child and save yourself. I feel as my mother holds my hand and tightly, more tight before, like to intimating, making me feel, Niso, don't be afraid, I won't give you away. Mangala was sitting on a, a table. He didn't sit behind the table, didn't stand, stand behind the table. He was sitting on the, on outside, on, on the outside part of the table, also cross-legged, all cross-legged. He was chain smoking. Always, always had his left hand as a cigarette and had his thumb. And this thumb determined the fate of a million and a half Jewish children. If he flipped the finger to the left, gas chamber, crematoria. If he flipped his finger to the right, go to work. And everybody, with the selection, everybody had to part, go through him by him, and he just looked at the person, and went, that's the finger. My father was tall, and very healthy. So my father says to me, listen, see so you go behind me. Because as I go pass by uh, uh, Mengele, maybe I'll be able to somehow mani manipulate my body that he should notice you. You go behind me, that he should just, you, you, you just pass, maybe he should notice you. Mengele gets off on the table, and comes over to me and asks me, how old am I? I tell him I'm 17. I was 10 and a half, going to 11. He tells me, gives a big smile. You are 17. You are 11, German. But give me thy father, but go with your father. And I went, a million and a half Jewish children. He sent to the gas chamber. Why me? Why God, me did he save? My sister was much taller than me. Although she was only a year and a half, but she looked like more, more like 15, 16. So my mother, my sister went to work, my mother went to work, but each one was separated in Germany. Thanks God, they survived. My mother passed away Maybe when she was 93 years old, maybe like eight years ago. My sister passed away a year and a half ago. And uh, Baruch Hashem, till Mashiach comes, I'm okay. <laughs> she, he, this is the which was etched in my skin in, in Auschwitz. And this is my visa, my passport to Mashiach coming. I will show him this, this, this uh, my badge of honor. From which I had. How come you're a strong believer? I said, because I, I saw day in and day out miracles. I just mentioned it too. Can go on and on and on with miracles. But let me give you an example. You play a game. For example, Monopoly. You have a dice. You have to roll, roll the dice, yes? 
What's the best number in the dice? Number six. You roll the dice a second time, and you get again number six. So what do you say? The first time, lucky. You get again a number six, you are very lucky. How about you go, uh, they roll the dice a third time, and you gain the number six, very lucky. How about you roll the, uh, roll the dice 10 times, 15 times? Every time you get number six, then you say, oh, something's going on. It cannot be lucky, luckily, every time you roll the dice, you always get sick. Same thing also with me. Each event, you can say, it's a nice coincidence. It's just luck. But if you go on and on and on, what happened to me with Mengele, once I was in clutches, I was second time in these clutches, yes, and I was inside in the gas chamber. I came out alive from the gas chamber. And uh, all these things in the death march, and a little child, 10, by this time was 11 years old, survived without food and whatsoever, you have to say, there's a God who held my hand and made me, I should survive. Poland had before the war three million Jews, which was such a center of Yiddishkeit, such a center of Hasidus, such a center of Torah. We completely was devastated. What kind of a mitzvah is it to revive such a place, which was the center, which was the largest center of Judaism, of Torah, of Yiddishkeit, of Hasidus, of mitzvahs in Europe, more than any other place, became after the world completely like a graveyard, nothing. So can you imagine when you do it in Poland to revive it? This is the biggest accomplishment, this is the biggest mitzvah, the biggest the nachas ruach, the joy which Hashem God Almighty can have. Kol kavot, Chabad in Warsaw, Kol kavot, what you are doing, as I said, the revival truly of the dead. Poland was the center of Yiddishkeit or Judaism in all Europe. These are completely devastated. Now you are reviving it. There cannot be a bigger joy for, for God Almighty and for Am Israel that even they which truly became a graveyard, all the concentration camps, Auschwitz, and Barkan, etc., etc., was in Poland. Now you bring back Yiddishkeit, it's the biggest, and you call a kavot, and you should just be Hatzloche, Muflogo, in everything what you do, all your endeavors, everything what you do.